So like we said earlier, prophecy is saying correctly what will happen in the future. And when it comes to biblical prophecy, the main point is to reveal the Messiah, reveal God's plans and purposes, teach sound doctrine and correction and training in righteousness. God who at various times and in various ways spoke in times past to the fathers by the prophets has in these last days spoken to us by his son whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom he made the worlds. So this verse is telling us that in the past, God used the prophets to speak to the nation of Israel. But now that the Messiah has fully been revealed, the words that they've said concerning the Messiah have now come to pass. And Matthew 5, 17 says, do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. Jesus Christ is the fulfillment of the law and the prophets. Whereas in the Tanakh, the Old Testament, God's spirit only rested upon the prophets at certain times to communicate his message. His spirit now lives inside of any believer who has put their faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. So just before Jesus is taken up into heaven, he leaves all believers with a very specific mandate in Matthew 28 verse 18 to 20, which says, go and make disciples of all nations, baptize people, teach them to obey all that I have commanded. A quick recap. In the beginning, God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit create. Man and woman are created in God's image. They use their freedom of choice to rebel against God's instruction, leading to death and separation from God and an imperfect world. God loves the world and promises to save it through preserving the nation of Israel to bring forth Saviour Jesus, born fully God and fully man of a virgin. He died the death that you and I deserve and rose again, whose blood means the forgiveness of sins and eternal life for all who believe. Not just Israel. God's Holy Spirit then goes to live in every single person who puts their trust in Jesus and he helps and guides them to live a life just like Christ, in love. The Holy Spirit comforts them and helps them because Jesus is coming back again a second time and this time it's to judge the world. Nobody knows when, but it's gonna get pretty rough. Go and make disciples of all nations and from a very small number of people, that's exactly what they did. They went to the ends of the earth and turned the world upside down with the gospel message. We see instances of the Holy Spirit speaking to individuals, telling them which way to go, um, whether or not to wait, and even warning them of impending doom. The Bible tells us to be open to prophecy, but also to test all things, to hold fast to what is good and get rid of what's evil. So now we get onto the subject of those who consider themselves to be modern day prophets. And a lot of them will say things like, we want to establish the lost office of the prophets. Standing in the office of the prophet of God. There's a process that God takes prophets through that he will not take people with the gift of prophecy through. Chuck Pierce is one of the major prophetic voices in the world today and is especially known for delivering accurate, accurate words about the times and seasons that we're in. They also uh, claim to be in positions of government in the church. And this is often based on an interpretation of Ephesians 4 verses 11 to 13. We all have the right to petition the Lord and receive inspiration through His Spirit. 
It is contrary to the economy of God for any member of the Church or anyone to receive instructions for those in authority higher than themselves. Revelations of the mind and will of God to the Church are to come through the First Presidency. This is the order of heaven. So King James has put a lot of things in the Bible that are not true. That's why you have to have a prophet. How can you hear without a prophet or preacher? How can he preach lest he be sent? Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And the Word of God is sitting in this room. And the watchtower teaches that only this group, the faithful and discreet slave class, has the intimate personal relationship with God. They have a closer relationship than anyone else. They therefore have the Holy Spirit interpreting the Bible and, and teaching them how to, how to teach you what the Bible says. And so they believe that members of this select group make up the leadership of their organization. They're underneath all of this. So can you imagine any Jehovah's Witness trying to have a relationship with God? He has to go through this entire structure to get to God. Is there any reason why Jehovah's Witnesses feel disconnected from God? And this is where I think it's really good to remind ourselves that prophecy is a community activity. Christians should be able to judge every single prophecy that we hear rather than just accept it as from the throne room of heaven. The idea behind it is that unless we listen to the revelations given by these prophets, then those who are believers in Jesus Christ will be left behind as God is doing a new thing. You often hear them use a lot of similar vernacular. I decree and I declare new wineskin, outpouring, open heaven, seed, fresh fire, nations, alignment, revival, end time wealth transfer, restoration, um, honor culture, church government, raising up activation of spiritual gifts, shift in the atmosphere, shift in the season, profit to the nations, dominion, occupying the land, submission, and various other things. Some of these words you might not even find in the Bible, um, but often they are taken out of their context and given a new meaning. Often they present a totally different picture to the one that Jesus Christ left. Part of the challenge of the Holy Spirit fresh through you is he wants himself to be represented in a greater way than the earth has been able to receive up to this time. You also said that God spoke to you about Passover, which begins April 8th. What did God say would happen at Passover? That we would start turning if we would participate in Passover. Then we have to remember there's a there's a 40 day period that God intended for them to press on through and come in to their enter into their promises. I believe uh, this is a rearrangement of the economic world system yeah. toward the transference of wealth. a renewal of the spiritual aspect of who he is and who we are and the union we have with him comes into a whole new baptism. So here's something that Chuck Pierce said, and this is back in September of 2019. This is a while ago. He prophesied that nations would come into turmoil until Passover, which is April 8th through the 16th. Yeah. Cindy Jacobs gave a similar word. So this is, I mean, they're saying it's only until Passover. They're saying it's only until Passover. They're saying it's only until Passover.
Uh, we have Lance Wallnow who said that the virus will touch only a fraction of the population, far less than those hit by uh, this year by the influenza in America. Within two or three weeks of this nuttiness uh, from the world system, that this time is, there's going to be a, a time of special access with the Lord and until this thing has passed. He said that he saw that God for 2020 was gonna equip and prepare God's people to soar higher than any calamity. He knew something was gonna come, but he said, we're gonna walk on the wings of the wind and teach, and God's gonna teach us how to soar above chaos, or chaos and confusion in these days. So, I and mean, there's so many more. I yes. just had prophet yes. after prophet who had good news that there's gonna be a training of the church, a preparation of humanity, that this is a season where this thing's gonna pass. If you're truly a prophetic church, you live in the future. Yeah. And so you become the temperature of the nation. For I, the Lord, am raising up a new thing in the earth, a new anointing, a new flow like never before for man has had his turn to do it his way and they have arranged the offices of my callings as they seem fit i say no more and i am raising up through these apostles the new form and the new move of my spirit which moves in the five-fold ministry not the one-fold ministry begins with the apostles And as every man stands in his place in his anointing that I've set for him, then the people are correctly fed, and the people are correctly taught, and the people are correctly raised up and discerned. No. Well, God's given me a vision, and I believe that he wants us to go into debt for $250 million to be, You know what the answer is, Mr. Pastor? No. Son, I have called you into this season and this time and I'm going to do a rearranging of some things and I'm going to cause your mind to take a shift and I'm going to develop within you some gifts and callings that have laid dormant for a while and there's going to be even a stream that you're going to get in. Those gifts are going to rise up and I'm going to place you. And because I'm broadening your tent, you haven't known where to stand in the past, but I say I'm going to put you where to stand because I'm going to cause you to be mingled in with those that can cause that within you to be mentored saith the Lord I say begin to leap for as you leap you will be planted and as you plant it you will stand I say this is a new day and you will be planted in my house and my house will open up and I will bring to you those that I have put in your heart to see saith the Lord Your father is in prison. Yes, he is. I saw him behind bars. Son, your son who is presently in trouble. There is a, is he taking medication? Is he depressed? He's oppressed, he's oppressed? What is wrong? You don't want to tell me? Okay. His room, who stays with him in his room? Who stays with him in his room? I'm going right into your house by the Spirit. I've located it, now I'm going into it. Two posters on the wall. Two people that have greatly affected him. One is dead. One of those stars in music is dead. That is on, no, it is on in his room. The Spirit Keep praying. Hey, pray, pray with me. Of Kirk. Kirk is upon him. And he wants to take his own life. Your son. The way Cobain did himself. God wants you to know something. I'm going to stop that thing. Fingers. Are your fingers numb? In your right hand. Headaches in your head. Yes. Reach your hands out. Reach your hand out to me. Yes. Reach the fingers out that are bothering you. Now, is the pain gone?
How many have I given a prophecy to you or your loved one that saved your life? Your or your loved one's life? A definite prophecy. Now that's something to look at. You know, the Lord is showing me um, a, a, a lot of depth. I'm seeing an ocean, and the ocean is deep. And that ocean uh, is one you never thought that you'd be able to swim in. But thus saith the Lord God Almighty under the anointing today, I am telling you, Doreen, uh, that you are going to swim. And God has not called you to drown. You're going to swim. And the, am, I, am I hitting on something here? And you're thinking in your mind, <laughs> hey, I'm in Bible school. I got a lot of things going on in my life. I, oh, wow, that is kind of true. Yes. And you start nodding. And I'm like, I'm telling you right now, you're going to swim. And I just make it up. Now, if I'm wrong or if I'm vague enough, that's why it's a shotgun you're gonna hit something. And often because of very poor discipleship and a huge lack of biblical literacy, many of these modern day prophets are able to introduce prophecies and ideas that are not subject to scrutiny.